The Sun Temple is actually a temple to the sun, moon, and morning star, and I'm writing a seven-volume book about this that will be available in rare books libraries in three years or so. It, also, it has a sun calendar and a moon calendar. I'm now going to talk about the moon calendar, the lunar calendar in the Sun Temple. Just to show you that the sun, I talked about the sun cairn before, and this is the sun cairn ring. There is a crescent southwest of it of seven rocks, and crescents whether you see them on a flag or stones on the ground, they represent the moon. And there's a special geometry between this moon and that sun. The ring is a sunburst, if you like. The actual stone pile is the sun. So take a line from this end of the moon through this one ton rock, it comes to that edge of the sun. From this end of the moon to that one ton rock to that, it, it brackets the sun, so I call that the morning star. A holy trinity around the world for many thousands of years has been the sun, moon, and morning star. Well, what about the moon calendar? The orbit of the moon around the earth wobbles, it precesses, and that causes the rise and set points to move back and forth around the solstitial sunrise and set points. It moves about 9 degrees one side and 11 degrees the other side, back and forth, on an 18.6 year cycle. Well, I've just drawn a sketch with, with uh, the sun lines. Uh, the, you might not be able to see the red, but anyway, this is a summer solstice sunrise, winter solstice sunrise, summer solstice sunset, uh, winter solstice sunset, and the summer solstice one. Where would the moon lines be? The moon line, the maximum north for the winter, the full, the full moon is opposite the sun, and the only phase, phase of the moon that you can accurately position within a few hours is the full moon because the edges of the full moon are crisp, they're sharp. A few hours before the full moon, the uh, left edge of the moon is a bit fuzzy and a few hours after it, the right edge is a bit fuzzy. So the, it, the, all of this calendar stuff is based on observations of the full moon. Well, the full moon maximum north comes near to this big bend in the Bow River. The maximum south for the uh, summer moonrise is near this big bend of the river. The winter full moon set line is near that big bend in the river. So the maximum north and maximum south for these three come near big bends in the Bow River. It's probably an accident or maybe that's why this hill was picked. I don't know. But anyway, that's what we observe. There is no river down near the maximum south for the summer, summer uh, moon set. And I will talk about that. It, it, there's nothing to mark this, but people wanting to be fair and give some, some emphasis on the minimum uh, moon direction, they actually, I'll show you a, a, a man-made line that comes in this direction for the summer moon set minimum. Well, the first observation, the photograph of the uh, winter moon rise was done by uh, a rancher who lives in the area. He kindly agreed to, to uh, 
save us the trouble of going out there in the middle of the winter and trying this photography. So he photographed the rising uh, moon. There was a bit of cloud on the horizon here, but you can extrapolate it along the known angle of rise. And the first flash would have been on, on the horizon if you just draw a straight line through here at this position. 5,000 years ago, oh, I'm jumping ahead of myself. This is where it was in 1989, but there's an 18.6 year cycle. So the position of the winter moon set is like this. The winter moon rise is like this, and the summer moon rise is like this, summer moon set is like this. So if you do a measurement in 1989 here of the winter moon rise, you can move it back to the minimum two years earlier. So this is why the maximum north for the full moon rise would be at this position, although it was observed in 89, two years later, in that position. So all of the adjustments that I will show you come from using this graph. I reproduce the landscape See, Rick Ruhn had his camera a bit too low, so you could see the horizon. Part of it was hidden by a rock, but the rest of the landscape you couldn't see. So I just reproduced the geometry and then raised the camera so you could see what was on the ground. And here is the winter moon rise maximum. And 5,000 years ago, it was 1.1 degrees farther uh, north, and I looked for markers on the ground, cairns, uh, and on this hill out about uh, 600 meters, I found two cairns here that could have been markers for this part of the calendar. The summer solstice sunrise is south of this northern maximum, and there is a marker here, it's a, it's a, it's a rock, 182 for that. 5,000 years ago, it was 1.1 degrees farther north. That was the maximum. Near a full moon rise minimum, this is the closest I got to the first flash. And doing the correction uh, using that graph, this is where the winter moon rise minimum would be. And the distance between here and here is 19 degrees. This is the summer, this is about 9 degrees, this is the summer sun, and this is about 11 degrees. Extrapolated from this position. Setting full moon, 22nd of December, 1999. Because I will just show you a little bit of light over here just to show you that it really is a moon. <laughs> this is an earlier picture. It's setting this way. It's oval shaped, not round, because as you come down, the amount of refraction of the light by the air, the increasing density air, flattens this circle somewhat that makes it an oval instead of a circle. And this is the last flash. This is the, the last blip of it and you extrapolate the middle down to the horizon it would come there. And using those wiggly graphs from that I can calculate that the winter moon set minimum is here. I haven't found a marker in this direction. Uh, this is one of the horizon high points. It's called. It's it's on the land owned by a fellow called Henry, so it's called Henry's Hill.
from the Sun Cairn, this is what I found would be the winter moon set minimum. The calculated maximum is here. Five years, 5,000 years ago, it was 1.1 degrees farther north, each of them. Here's the sun. So from here is 11 degrees, and from here it's 9 degrees. This is Jumping Buffalo Hill. It's on, in, on Siksika First Nation. But again, I haven't found any markers that show that clearly. There's work here for another three or four generations of people who are interested in it. Summer solstitial full moon rise. <laughs> it's coming up here. Uh, yeah, you could see actually the through the haze you could see the sun circle. The limb is the top, the top of it. So the first flash is when the top just appears. The last flash is when the top just dis disappears. So the important part of the sun disk is the limb, the top. So you extrapolate that back. This is where you get the first flash in 1998. And using the wiggly graph to find where the minimum would be, this is where it would have been on 1996. This is the sunrise. This shows near the southern maximum. This is the disappearing, this is the appearing, the first flash of the, in 1989, and the summer moon rise maximum would have been at this position. So here's the minimum, here's the sun, here's the maximum. So that's the moon calendar. about the summer solstitial full moon set. It's coming down this way, so that's the limb, this is where it would disappear. And from those wiggly lines, the, the graph, you can find that this is where the maximum southerly full moon would disappear. This is the secondary sun cairn. I showed you the three hills. This is taken from the main sun cairn. This is the secondary sun cairn. That was the maximum. This is the summer solstitial full moon set in June 1998. This is the last flash. It's a long extrapolation. This is all cloudy because you, you can't see the sun over here, but you know accurately the setting curve, so that's where it would have disappeared. And from the wiggly graph, this is where the minimum would be. And I'm going to show you later on, this is a, a cairn about 50 meters away from the sun cairn. I'll show you that line later. So what they're doing is they're giving some special notice to the minimum of the center. They gave the maximum to the other three uh, directions and the minimum to the summer set. So this is a graph showing uh, an image showing the summer moon set maximum. This is the secondary sun cairn. This is the Summer set minimum. Now, what about this line? This is Karen. That, that's our big rock, 17, number 17. This is a photograph. This this is the, the morning star, the sun Karen. That's the a Karen and a rock making a line. This is the morning, behind the morning star, a bit lower is the crescent moon, and I'll show you the crescent moon. This is an aerial survey photograph. So here's the sun, Karen. 
we talked about the ray. There are 28 rays in the sun cairn. There are 28 visible phases of the moon. This is ray number 20. So you go along ray 20, go along ray 20, you come to the morning star, through the middle of the moon crescent, through this rock, uh, 156 prime, and a cairn down here of 156 double prime. So that is how humans marked, gave special notice to the summer moon set minimum direction. End of lunar calendar.